Okay, we are on. All right, guys, how's everybody doing out there? The team is together once again, and we're doing our first live session. And um, this session was actually created by Diana here. Um, we've done what makes a good villain, what makes a good hero, what makes a good supporting character. But this time, we're going to do what makes a good love interest. And I was not going to do this without Deanna. She just came back from London, and she had a good time. Go check out her video. You'll, you'll, you'll laugh, guys. I promise you. Um, but other than that, we're here to basically talk about what makes a good love interest. So since this is Deanna's bid first, I'd like her to go first. So Deanna, you can floor is yours. Turn the mic off. Mic, your mic. Mike, Mike, your mic. Turn, yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so I didn't want it to be like the stereotypical girl thing to do to propose a love interest discussion. But then again, you know, I was just talking about this on Facebook, and I think when dealing with stories like superhero stories especially where you know you have a villain you have a sidekick you have this whole set of like this context that is filled with things that we usually we do not find in our lives like we don't have sidekicks we don't have villains we don't have superpowers we don't have arch nemesis but most of us have to deal with romance in some form or another, either because we have a partner or because we want one or because we're attracted to somebody. And, you know, relationships and love and romance and sex even, you know, these are things that everybody can relate to and they're classic, classic storytelling elements. And even, you know, in superhero comics, you can have that discussion, like, is it better to have a love interest? Would it be better for instance, the Batman movies to have kind of pushed that thing aside, at least until Catwoman came in? Because I think we can all say that Rachel Dawes, not the greatest character ever. <laughs> uh, to, to, put, to put it mildly. Um, yeah, so, so that was my motivation for this, in part because it is a subject that is very close to our hearts, pun intended. And also because, specifically with superhero romances, you know, you have fan bases that either accept a love interest or completely reject it. And also you have that thing of transitioning from, specifically with comic books here, transitioning from a particular type of character, and then you see that, or relationship, and then you see that in movies or television shows, in the adaptation of the original material, and it's very different. And these are some of the things that I personally thought it would be interesting to talk about. I'm done. She's done. <laughs> that, was, that was my long-winded intro to what I thought the topic would be, and why it, it was worth handling. Good, 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 good. Uh, Ian, want to go next? Um, what, am I introducing myself, or am I, am I actually talking about the topic? <laughs> you're, just talking about the, you're just talking about the topic, dude. Everybody knows who we are now. I give up. Well, um, well, the thing about romance for me is that I've grown up watching so many action movies uh, that it almost seems like a prerequisite for the for the protagonist to have, you know, a love interest character of some sort. And oh, why? Why? Why is it? Here? What does it does it add to the action, or does it detract from the action? For me, it detracts a whole lot because most of the time, the romances were only put in there just to appeal to a certain demographic. Most of the time, anyways. You mean women? Yes. You think women would not watch action movies if there wasn't a love interest? I'm not saying that, but <laughs> I'm saying the that, reason... That seems to be what you're saying. No, that is not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that the audiences are really like that. I'm saying the only reason why they are mostly put in there is for the is for the studios or the 
producers or whatever to ensure that they make whatever profit that they can. From so women. They ensure having, they, have, they need to have a love interest of some kind. And so, that makes the movie worse? Um, in my opinion, it can, but, I mean, if it's done right, then I guess it can, I can forgive it. It, I, you know, it, it kind of adds to the movie some. Okay, what does it mean for it to be done right? Um, not for the you. Star Wars, not the Star Wars prequels. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking? Having a creepy stalker is sexy. Uh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, what Twilight taught me. Fucking is sexy. Twilight taught me something else, but <laughs> not that. Well, having never having never actually had a girlfriend in my whole life, I can't really. I'm not the biggest expert on romance or anything like that. But I can just tell in a movie whether a romance really works or whether it really doesn't. I can't really describe it or go into specifics, but. It's just one of those things where you watch it and it's like, yeah, you know, I can I can see this. This this feels right, you know. That's I can't I can't eloquently put it into words. Okay, is it more about chemistry or writing? Chemist uh, chemistry is important, definitely. So it's mostly about chemistry. Yeah, it's yeah, mostly. If the two characters have a lot in common, I don't see why they shouldn't become romantically involved. Mm. 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 Okay, I think we're deaf grilling uh, Ian for a while. <laughs> uh, no, I, hey, I'm not done yet. Okay, go ahead. Uh, as, far as, as far as superhero romances go... I really uh, am getting tired of the whole cliche of I can't, you know, I can't tell you the truth because I'm afraid my enemies might get to you or some crap like that. I I get really tired of that because you know if you really love somebody that much, you should be willing to risk that. You know, that's just the way I feel about it. No, that's a good point. I, I yeah. agree with you on that. That does get a little that cliche. Goes. Um, uh, definitely, I would agree with you on that one. And, pl and plus, another thing that never made sense to me is that I can't tell you my secret identity because you're afraid somebody else might know. Well, what would happen if it's just me and you and nobody else? You just go to a distant place where there's nobody else, and I can just tell you, "Hey, I'm Batman, or I'm Superman, or I'm Spider-Man, or I'm the Flash, or whatever." You know, who's gonna know? You're in the middle of nowhere. It's not like there are supervillains spying on you with surveillance devices or something. It's the most ridiculous logic I've ever heard. But everybody's on Twitter and on Facebook. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I can definitely see your points. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've got no... Hey, if it feels right, if it feels right, if it feels natural, then I can dig romance. I can, I can definitely support it. I can support the idea of romance. I mean, just as long as it doesn't interrupt everything else. I did. I wasn't a huge fan of how in the original 1989 Batman movie, most of the times we ever saw that. Most of the time we ever saw Batman, it was when he was trying to save uh, Vicky Bale. I wasn't, I really wasn't crazy about that. <laughs> and all the screaming. Yeah. We yeah. do not want Batman to be all about the pussy. Exactly. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and especially the Spider-Man movies. The Spider-Man movies got out of control with that BS. Oh, yes. Indeed. Especially in the <gasps> In, in defense of the Spider-Man movies, at least it was obvious from the beginning that Toby that Toby Maguire's Peter Parker considered Mary Jane to be the love of his life. Okay, it wasn't like he's on this crusade for justice and oh wait, pussy. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, wait. 
we're, we're just saying that. I'm sorry, but their, 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 romance, their romance was so painful to sit through. Oh my. Of course it's pain. Of course it was painful. Because Toby Maguire, because really Toby Maguire that. actually cried more than Terrence Howard. In that movie. <laughs> Every other frame, Toby was crying about something. I want to tell her. Oh my God, Uncle Ben's dead. Oh, Doc Ock knows who I am. It's a, it's like, it's like, put your mask on, take your balls out of your purse, and actually be a superhero. How about Kristen Dunst looking sedated? <laughs> oh, good I God. Believe, yes. I cannot believe that people are ranting about Tobey Maguire since The Amazing Spider Man, Andrew Garfield cried too. And he cried like, from the very first fucking movie. At least Tobey Maguire waited until the third one. Well, <laughs> why, is it cool to, why is it cool to piss on Tobey Maguire? I don't understand. It's not like I'm Andrew Garfield hey, a I'm not much, pissed, much better job. I, I'm not I, 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 my, my thing was, I just thought. In the first movie, I thought Toby and uh, Kristen had good chemistry. Second one, even. But the third one, no. Mm. That shit was god awful. Let's not forget about the Saturday Night Fever scene after, you know, he's sitting there with, like, the little bags under his eyes. And then they finally, they completely fuck over continuity by introducing Gwen Stacy. They, you know, at the, But Sam Raimi himself basically said, you know... Fox was like, oh, we want Venom, we want this, we want that, and so Sam basically just threw the script at him and said, you know what, fuck it, you write it, and then that's the movie that we got. Well, hey, well, he's, doing evil fit. He's, deep. he's doing Evil Dead 4 now, so... The only thing that I only wish is that Red from that 70s show came on and actually threatened to kick Topher Grace's ass. That would have actually had made the movie Anyways, a lot better yeah. for me. Let me get back onto the topic at hand. Yeah, yeah because we can way off. Uh, yeah, we, we definitely were. Uh, I didn't like Tobey Maguire that much. I really didn't. Uh, I thought he really got, he really got the human aspect of Peter Parker down perfectly. He nailed that part, I won't lie, but I'm serious when I say that I hated, I hated the romance in all three movies between those two. I could not stand it. It was the most cliché, contrived, most horribly written romance I have, I have nearly ever seen. It was almost as bad as Anakin and Padme, for God's sake. So I guess everybody here kisses girls upside down in the rain. I, I actually liked their romance in the first one. It, it came off really good to me. I, I, Can I? Oh, yeah. The one, the one in the first one was the least annoying, was the least painful for me. The ro that was that was that was when it was at its best. But in the second movie, oh boy, the second movie. Musa. <laughs> Musa. Oh. That was the Alright, go ahead, Victor. What's your take? Um for me with romance, I'm probably I probably like romance probably more so than any guy in his room and probably any girl in his room uh, too uh, as well because I think it has something to do with my self-consciously, I don't have a romantic relationship in real life, so when I watch movies, I kind of really am longing for that, so I kind of like really dig romance. But when it comes to superheroes, I, I kind of agree with the point that it's kind of overdone with the whole cliches and stuff, but I do really like it. I think the best I've actually seen and this is ironic, considering I hate the goddamn show. Smallville is with Erica Durant, Lois Lane, which was great, and Tom Welling. Their back and forth was great to watch. I'm like, that was cool. Yeah, you know? I can, I can actually they agree. did really good with that. Yeah. But they, they had one good. thing I really hate about romance is, especially with modern day Western American superheroes, is the love triangle shit. That really pisses me off. Like, with the whole, uh, what, what was it, Superboy, Martian, I mean, Martian Manhunter, no, Martian, Miss, Miss Martian. Martian, and it was somebody else, but that boy? shit really got out of hand. I don't really like the, the whole setup of, we're going to have two girls who hate each other, and they're going to fight over one guy, and that's their, like, whole character development, who they're fucking and who they're dating and shit like that. Like, if I'm a woman, I would be embarrassed to, like, read superhero comics when they do that. Like, 
or just watch the movies. I hate to love trying new shit. That really pisses me off. So you did, oh yeah, because you didn't like you didn't like the the Korra and all of that uh, that love triangle. Yeah, the the yeah, and Legend of Korra, the whole uh, love triangle and that ruined the show. I mean, look at the female characters in there. Their only development was who they were dating, who they were fucking at the time, and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, they were they didn't actually show the characters fucking, but it's implied that they were. I mean, it's a kid show, but they were fucking. It was like a porn without the porn. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But yeah, that shit really pisses me off. I mean, they don't know how to do, like I said, especially in Western entertainment. I would say more so in anime and stuff, they really get it down more better. But like in superhero American comic books, it's not really well done as far as romance goes. Especially now that they're rebooting and, you know, uh, doing all these damn rehashes and shit. And so... You can't really, the characters can't really grow anymore as far as, like, love interests go. Okay. I mean, look at they did. I mean, no more Peter Parker's not with Mary Jane anymore. Lois Lane is not with Superman anymore, unfortunately. Uh, I, I really hated what they did with uh, Black Panther and Storm. I always thought that Thor and Storm would have been a better relationship. That's just me. <laughs> I mean, they did that in an alternate universe. Yeah. Wait a minute. They had like a thing going, but they they went with the whole cliche. Yeah, these uh, people I actually, black and they're I both African. A, I actually have a question about that. Um, uh, they said they said that T'Challa and Storm had actually met when they were when they were kids. Mm -hmm. did, but didn't I, they make that story up after they had gotten together? No, they. That's, actually, that's what I was asking. Like, was that always was that always there, or did they just pull that out of their ass at the very? No, 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 it, it, it happened. It happened. Uh, once, only once. T'Challa helped Storm when a couple of uh, uh, they were poachers at the time, and Storm was trying to stop them. Uh, and they came, and he was. T'Challa was on like his quest, you know, becoming a manhood, and he helped her out, and that's kind of where their relationship started from. Okay. okay. So that's yeah, but my question was that did that ex was that established like years? I mean, real life years before they got married in the comics, or no. did they that's what I'm saying. I think it was a retcon after they got together. After they started, you know, um, yeah, putting them together, I think they were like, yeah, they were. You know, yeah, they that's stuff when they were kids. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, really. Right, I didn't. I was just. Uh, you can go on. I didn't mean to interrupt, to interrupt you. No, no I was going to go to Steve. Now. I was going to go to Steve and wonder what Steve had to say about it. Of course, talk to the guy who, when it comes to relationships, is very emotionally fragile and very vulnerable. Okay. Um, but how does that affect how you handle? You know, fictional relationships. Like, I, you does know, it, get in the middle of you enjoying a good romance story. No, it doesn't. It actually, you know, it actually kind of makes me long for kind of the relationship that most of these characters have. Like, I'll admit, I've always been very envious of Peter Parker and Mary Jane and Lois Lane and Superman. You know, the very stereotypical relationships that you know we actually that we actually you know have come to know for years before all these retcons. But for me, I've always looked at it this way. Don't while while I do enjoy you know the romance between characters, and while and while especially in the case of say a character like Superman and Lois Lane, that humanizes Superman a little bit more. One thing that I kind of enjoy more, as far as like superhero comics and movies and even anything else, and movies don't even hardly touch it, and I wish that they would. Um, why make the woman the damsel in distress? I know th this is not the 30s or 40s anymore. You don't need to try to make the superhero look badass. Like, make the female... Like, look, for example, look at what Emma Stone did in Amazing Spider-Man. She wasn't just there for eye candy. She actually did stuff. She actually helped Peter. She actually... You know, she even was actually... She, was, she even was willing to put herself in danger. Whereas you look at, say, Kirsten Dunst and... 
you know, her little sedated, like, ugh, rule, role in Spider-Man, and she's always constantly getting in danger. She's letting the bad guy capture her. I mean, even Gwyneth Paltrow in Iron Man, you know, actually at the end started to do some. To me, I look at the chemistry between the hero and their said love love interest. I want the love interest to kick a little bit of ass too, whether they're human or superhuman. I is want it, them to actually. They should, be part, they should be partners. I exactly. Think like when exactly when people say love interests, specifically in relation to superheroes, they automatically think of somebody like Lois Lane for Superman or Mary Jane for Peter Parker. But Wonder Woman has a love interest too. His name is Steve Trevor and Quasar and that bald chick. What's her name? Moon Dragon. Moon Dragon. Moon Dragon. Those are love interests for each other too. I mean, a love interest does not have to exist solely as like this adage for the superhero to be humanized, and she doesn't necessarily have to be a female. Exactly. For a man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, and look at look at uh look at uh um. Or Barbara Gordon and Nightwing, for instance. Yeah, I was I was gonna even go was, with. Uh, yeah. look, um, um, you know, well, you know, yeah. I I think I'll actually pull another one. You know, Peggy Tim Carter. Drake look and, how Peggy Carter was in 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 Captain America. I would like to uh, add that. How how often have you seen like a gay superhero with like a male you know love interest? North Star. You know, Wiccan and Hulk and Hulkling. Yeah. Alan Scott. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, Midnighter and Apollo. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you oh, know, the, the, that's one I think is really well done. Like they don't focus on their look. Like they're not kissing all the time. They're not trying to throw it in your face. Like, yeah, these two characters are gay. They're gay. They're gay. It's very subtly done. Considering that book is like violent as hell. Like they yeah, really the did out their relationship. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, to me, whether it's like, you know, male on male, female on female, or, you know, female and male and what have you, to me, when I think of a love interest, I don't think of the stereotypical, oh, well, they have to be in danger, so the hero has to rescue them. It's like, no, you know, the love interest shouldn't just be there for, shall we say, you know, glitz and glamour and good looks and, you know, dashing good looks if it's like a male love interest. You want the interest character, you know, the character that that character is intimate with to actually not just be involved with be involved with them emotionally, but you want them to also be able to, you know, shall we say, you know, fight alongside that character, or at least do stuff that, you know, you would consider, you know, very brave and kind of actually, I don't know, simplistic and modern, like how like how a love interest would actually act. Like let let let's face it, if it was in the case of Superman. Or, uh, or something like that, and it actually was in real life, I guarantee you Lois Lane's not going to just stand there and be like, oh my god, the plane's coming, it's going to crash on me, and then, you know, Superman comes and saves the day. No, Lois is going to run the fuck away. She's not going to stand there like a dunce and let the plane hit her. You know, it's not like, you know, that. that's one thing about comic books that always annoyed me, is that they made the male or female love interest so damn stupid. Like they purposely wanted it, it's it's what I call the Mario theorem. It's just like how in every Mario game almost, even though this has nothing to do with comic books, but the reason why I bring this up is simply because it's the fact that the love interest is constantly getting captured or they're being put in danger that they could easily avoid or get out of. But it's just, oh well we have to, you know, show this superhero being heroic. Have them fight, you know. Have them fight. Have them fight super criminals. That's heroic. Don't have them go and try to rescue the love interest. Like for once, I actually want to see, shall we say, a love interest character. Like I don't want Steve Trevor attached to a missile and then we see Wonder Woman fly the invisible jet to stop it. Let Steve Trevor pick the locks and fall into like the ocean or something. You know that. It's just little things, but then again, that's an old school way of thinking. You know, now they actually make the love interest do something, which. I, I can be a little bit more happier about, or at least they pair them with somebody who, say, can actually hold their own. And those are the inter and those are the, the relationships that I love a lot more. Mm -hmm. I love the relationships where the two of them, they're not just you know lovers, but they're actually partners. They both, you know, they can both kick ass. They can both hold their own. You know, and so, those make. So do you prefer Superman with Wonder Woman as opposed to Superman with Lois? With Lois. Ah. Uh. You know, 
You, you know, th there's a part of me that I will always like Lois and Clark, especially when they were married. But in all honesty, I, I've you know, as much you know, and I'm sure most people will you know cry you know bullshit at it. But you know, but I'd say Clark and Diana, or or in the case of Spider-Man, you know, like Pete and Carol. Yeah, I can actually get behind those relationships because think about it this way: when he was with Mary Jane. Pete always had to constantly worry about her. He had to worry about Aunt May. He had to worry about all the people that he cared about, you know, specifically MJ. But when he's with Carol, he doesn't have to worry about Carol because Carol, Carol's a superhero herself. She, you know, bullets bounce off of her. She can more than hold her own. She's a tough-ass chick. She doesn't have to have Peter, you know, like cradle her or cuddle with her or anything like that. No, Carol, you know, in fact, actually, dare I say it, Carol will be the first one to take charge. She'll charge at the supervillain and beat him right right in the fucking face, whereas, you know, Pete's just going to be standing there like, like, you know, hey, wait for me, and, you know, he's swinging right behind her. It's like, you know, that, it's like, you know, th those kinds of relationships I like, and, it's like, you know, okay, if Clark and Diane are together, then, hey, they can fight back to back, you know, and then, you know, after that, you know, they can have a smooch fest make out while they're sitting there, sitting on, like, the corpse of Darkseid or whatever the hell you want to put it, you know, but, you know, it's like, yeah, I kind of prefer, you know, the love interest that actually is not just, you know, they're not just there, you know, th but more the love interest that actually do stuff, so it's like, in that terminology, Deanna, yeah, I kind of prefer Wonder Woman with Superman, even though, you know, I am very much, you know, used to, you know, Lois and Clark being together, but I feel that Lois being with Clark, as much of an old school Superman fan as I am, that kind of limited Clark, really, in terms of character development, because she's a human woman. There's not much that she can really do. You know, there's not, shall we say, what I call a power intimacy. You know, whereas, you know, if she got hurt or she got killed, you know, that, you know, yeah, it's emotionally scarring, but it's not, to me, as impactful as, say, if it's somebody who is just as equally, shall we say, on par with him and then gets taken out. There, to me, there's a lot more of an emotional impact. You know, because because also it's a character that, you know, also has its own fan base. I don't know. I'm going a little bit too complex into this, but it's just, you know, my way of thinking, my thought process is that, you know, I, I, I like the love interest stories where, where it's actually the male and the female or whichever male on male, female on female, where... It actually works, you know. There's symmetry, basically. I like the I like the ones where it's like it's two superheroic type characters that have symmetry, and you know, and, and those are the stories that I actually gravitate more towards the most. So you're, but, you know, you're basically saying pe people like Angel and Buffy work. Exactly, you know, people like Angel and Buffy work. You know, like I said, Hulkling and Wiccan of the new, of the Young Avengers. Um, you know, the you know, Renee Montoya and, you know, Kathy Kane. You know, it's Medusa, like Medusa Medusa from Marvel and um Medusa and Kane. Black Bolt. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. I, you know, just, I just want yeah. to address one thing that Steve said that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, that being with Lois Lane would be limiting to Superman because she's a human woman. First of all, Superman essentially is human. He is a human with superpowers, but he thinks in a very human way. He has a very human set of values. So from a personality point of view, there is nothing limiting about being with a human woman because essentially he is human. And he is more similar in that regard to Lois Lane than he is to Wonder Woman, who is a demigoddess. First of all. Second of all, <laughs> um, what you're saying is that it's more convenient for a superhero to be with a superheroine, or vice versa, because they don't have to worry about her, blah, 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 blah. Um, convenience is, what can, how can I say this, is like, honestly, it's a little bit, it's, it, it kind of contradicts the idea of it being, you know, emotional impact and blah, blah, blah. There's a certain conflict that is inherent to all relationships. All relationships imply compromise and conflict and dealing and negotiating and blah, 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 blah. It's not easier to be with a superheroine and it's not harder to be with somebody who is not a superheroine because all relationships imply work. And 
I don't. That's that's the thing that rubbed me the wrong way. That it would be limiting for him to be with a human woman. If the writing is good, like if Superman would be with somebody other than Lois Lane, who is just a human, I would think that's fine. It depends on how how well the relationship is actually written. That's why I, I don't I don't classify love interests like who does the most shit because Lois Lane does plenty for Superman. If you know what I mean. I'm not saying I'm not saying that's actually a perfect mindset. It's just it's more it's more a matter of personal preference to me. Like for me, like, like I said, I've always grown up with you know Lois and Clark. You know, I even especially, I mean, my first introduction to Lois Lane practically was when the two of them got married. You know, so it's like it 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 it's to me it's personal preference, and yeah, it is convenience to have say you know, somebody paired with another superhuman being, but then again, you are correct on that, Deanna. It it really depends on who's writing it and how well they write it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but for me, but, you know, but for me, it, it's, it's you know, more... For instance, now the people that are writing Superman and want everyone to be together, obviously their own, in their own mindset, they agree with you. They're on the same wavelength with you. But I, well, where I said they 10 can years ago, you get married and shit because that's what the prevailing opinion was back then. Yeah, that's their Frank Miller way of thinking. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, they, they, the way Johns has written their relationship is basically in the sense of saying, saying the fact that a, one, there's nobody like Superman and Wonder Woman, so they make a perfect combination. That, that to me spells convenience. Yeah, right. Like, we don't want it's to easy. work it's on. Easy. We don't want to compromise with anybody else, and we're just going to find somebody that is exactly like us instead I mean, of acting yeah, like us. It's, 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 it's the easy way out. Exactly. She literally said it to Superman. She's like, "There's no other man like you on this planet, and you're alone, and I'm alone." And when I read that, I was like, "Really? That that's the no, best." No, see, see to see to me that the world swallows violin. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the world's smallest violin, and see, it's like, to me, if I were to write Diana and Clark's relationship, that would not really be in there. I mean, it would, you know, there would be maybe a, a certain, like, you know, hint at that, but it would, I would, I wouldn't play on the fact that, well, oh, you know, she's a demigoddess, and oh, you know, he's the last of an extinct alien race. It's like, I play up on more or less, like, the human traits of the characters, like, you know, really... What would they bring to the table in the relationship? Yeah, it's convenience, but really, it's not just about the convenience to me, but it's more the emotional factor. Like, what would each of them bring to the to the relationship? For one, and two, how would how would how would I be able to bind these two characters together and actually make them, you know, seem like a quote unquote believable couple? Like, you know, this is a couple that even though they have superpowers, how would they exist in the real world? How would they, you know, function? And so, I, and so I do put a real-world simplicity to, to that. I, I do think about it. I mean, hell, you know, all the New Earth 2.0 stuff that myself and Tony have been working on, I mean, we put Kara Zarell and Dick Grayson together. And I'm, stu and I'm still thinking about, you know, okay, you know, Dick and Kara, a hu you know, a human guy who's in a sense the new Batman, and then, you know, Superman's female cousin. How am I going to make those two work? I'm still plotting that out, but it's more the emotional part of it. It's not. I I take the superpowers. I take all the little fun things about them, and I just it, it I, you know I, I equivocally put it. It's like that scene in Iron Man when Tony's building the suit and you see him throwing shit away. That's like in a sense what I'm doing in my mind. I'm like taking okay, ground the character up to like you know little like meat bits. Throw this away. Throw that away. Okay, I'm gonna put this in here. Like I'm building a Frankenstein monster. Out of like, you know, how am I going to do this relationship? And that's always what I dissect the most from the relationships. It's not what makes the human more, you know, it's not what, what makes this character more human or why does this character need to be with this character. It's more, how do these how do these characters function together? How do they work together? What makes them, you know, connect? What makes them click? And what would make them click with, you know, the comic book reader, male or female? And right. that's... And that's really what I look for more than anything. I could care less if Superman could fly, shoot laser beams out his dick, and all that stuff. 
But what does he bring to the table when he's with Lois, or if he was hypothetically with Diana, or if he was with any other female character for that matter? What would they bring to the relationship that Clark would also bring? What you know? What's the you know? What's going to be the emotion? What's going to be the dialogue? What's going to be the motivation for their pairing? What's going to you know continue their relationship? Like you know, all all, all you know, all the little like. All those small details that are that while they are small and insignificant are very important. Like how is all that? It, it, it's because it's got to be like clockwork. That's always something that I've said. You know, whether it be comic books, fiction, or any other genre, you know, it's got to be like clockwork. You got to make it, you know, actually work and be in sync. Because if it's not, then it's just going to all be jumbled up and screwed up and then you're going to have to rehash and retcon everything and then break it all down again. Yeah. And, and it seemed kind of pointless. Okay. Uh, Kyle. Kyle, yeah. You, you yeah, did, that was a lot longer than I wanted to go on. Young blood out of all of us. What's your take on this? And fellow sunglasses wearer. <laughs> yes. Don't make me blast you, Ian. Get those off. Uh... First off, what the fuck was with Rachel Doss? Is there a problem? <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, but uh, I don't know. Steve had one of my main points uh, about the stereotyping women into the damsel in distress. I don't like that anymore. That was fine back in the day. That that shit don't go anymore. Uh, yeah, well, sorry, it's been a while. Uh, to me, I've never been in a relationship, and I'm I'm eager to do it when I excuse me. Really rephrase that. I'm eager to get into one when I do. Uh, but with comics and relationships with me, I always think of it as an escape to enjoy and kind of see how stuff works like that. And I, uh, how do I phrase this? I have a hard time. I apologize. Uh, shoot. Oh, what I'll bring up an example. Boat, Kyle? Hmm? What floats your boat? Uh, what floats your boat? I don't know. I don't. I don't have a boat. Uh, so, uh, but my favorite. I'll make an example. Uh, my favorite couple is probably Mary Jane and Spider Man. My favorite character and my favorite. One of my favorite females to be together. She was a good wife to him, and he was a good husband to her. And <clears throat> they had such a. They worked hard at what they did. I know that you know Peter. Yeah, I understand what you guys are saying about the cliche. I can't know who you are. But sometimes it's best to do that. I understand it's old now. But if you really love someone, you don't want to get them in trouble. But I understand that risk you were talking about, guys. But they, those two work so well together. And I was the one who brought that up. Who? I was the one who brought that up. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Take credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm waving my hand. I'm waving my hand like nobody cares. Let's just let keep let Cal talk. <laughs> Go ahead, go. Yeah, uh, and I mean, I always liked that relationship because you know they did work hard at it, and it was hard at sometimes. I mean, Pete was always in his fantasy world of being Spider-Man, doing his job, and yeah, Mary Jane got in trouble a lot of the time, but I mean, they always worked it out, and that was what I loved about relationships in comics. Sure, it depends on the writer if they're stereotyping women, and still like Dan Slott on Spider-Man right now, stereotyping Mary Jane, but I mean. I don't know. I just like the chemistry between those two, and they need to know each other a little bit. And they don't need to be bimbos. I'm sorry. They don't need to do that. But that's pretty much it. Sorry. So. What if, What about the uh, relationships that are off and on, like the Catwoman and Batman? Like they're not officially on. Like they're like off and on, like all the time. We're just for the sex. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's for the sex, but sometimes they have really something going. On, like. Yeah, Superhero probably. booty calls. <laughs> yeah, I know Batman wants to get inside, you know, Selena's, you know what, but I, I, sometimes it's kind of mutual, depending on who writes it. Okay, I, I give like it. Like in Batman it. Hush, like I don't like Hush, but that moment was kind of mutual where they kiss, like under the moon and stuff like that. Like she's uh, okay, like, haven't I, I, you I, I ever been curious? And then he was like, I don't know, and then he kissed her, and it, it was kind of a mutual kiss. It wasn't like, oh, I want to fuck you. It was like, oh, I kind of look. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I give an example that basically where I hear Vic's coming from, where it's 
it's cliche or that that kind of love. I'm not saying it's cliche. I'm I'm kind of it's kind of like an off and on thing, yeah. but it's, I but a, a, relation, a relationship that I can think of right now that just it that was just that point of like I said, it's just a booty call or something like that was not recently on Arrow actually. Ooh, Huntress. Yeah, Huntress. They just they just meshed those two oh. together with yeah. Huntress and Ollie, and then it was just like, well. You know, I, I'm just gonna lay the pipe to you first episode, and that's it. You know, don't we're not forget gonna... about don't forget an All Star Superman. Frank Miller went nuts and decided, hey, let's put Bruce Wayne and have him actually, you know, f how, and have him fuck Black Canary in the the Gotham dockyards. Yeah. yeah meanwhile, yeah, she's got that, a salmon. Mean, meanwhile, meanwhile, she's got like a salmon sticking out of her ass. You know, because <laughs> how they roll example. over, that, I you mean, know, that, playing console example. hockey, falling right into the water. And then all of a sudden, Aquaman's got to look at him like, "Hey, hey, y'all got to take that to the surface." Yeah, that this is an example of bad writing. Like, like the characterization in that book is utter garbage. The pure sewer shit. So we know that. I mean, the whole with that Black Canary and Batman thing, what he did, mm -hmm. Frank Miller in that book was just garbage. You know, it's crazy in this season. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah I know. You know, I, I, I go ahead, Ian. Um. The thing with on and off relationships, they're kind of a byproduct of the fact that most romance in comic books, because there are serial narratives that last for a really long time, mm -hmm. they tend to have this soap opera quality when it comes to romance and the fact that, you know, we know these characters for 10 years, sometimes they're going to be together, sometimes they're not going to be together. And also it's the fact that some characters are good love interests but they're not good relationship interests like you can be in love with somebody but you cannot be in a relationship with them relationship implies you know it has a beginning it has a middle and it has an end love is does not work like that you don't know exactly when you start loving a person you don't know when exactly you're in the middle of it and most of the time you don't ever really stop all out to love a person it never well, ends I, I, I think you do kinda know when you kinda Love somebody. I mean, well, may, may, maybe you won't admit it to them, but mm -hmm. well, I with care, like okay, going personally, it depends. Sometimes you start by being friends with somebody, and at some point you realize, oh fuck, I'm in love with him. And sometimes yeah. it's like, oh, I'm gonna fuck him, and it's love on the spot. <laughs> uh, that's, that's getting a little too that, close to home for my that. comfort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's really bad that's history real, with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's just yeah. you know, you're you you're I feel I feel like literally this is part of one of the reasons that I was a little hesitant to do this video because I knew somebody was gonna eventually say something that was gonna trigger like an emotional response to my brain like like ooh that's gonna dig just a little bit deep. Nah, that's that's, that's good for me because that 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 hits home pretty much for me. I yeah, think, but I think I think the sex is also poorly done and like. Superhero. Oh, yeah. I don't mind sex, oh, yeah. but it's it's, it's it's really really forced, especially in superhero comics. I mean, it's done better in like the independent stuff, but in Catwoman number Marvel one, and DC stuff is really really just like but sex, let's, is, let's, sex is poorly admit, done in a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, hard, yeah, that's like, true. Let's admit that the fan base and the readers are at least partly to blame for the way that sex is handled in comic books because people still cannot get over the fucking fact that Superman can, in fact, have sex with humans. Get yeah. over it. Okay, Kevin Smith was funny in that one movie, that one time, with that one speech about Wonder Woman and Superman. Get the fuck over it. Superman can fuck Lois Lane. It's the way it is. Exactly. <laughs> it's like... Hulk's underwear. It's one of the things that we have established <laughs> in comics. <laughs> <laughs> His penis I knows think, what the fuck it's doing. It's not going to kill anybody. I, I mean, I think it's also the fact that superheroes are still mainly a male thing, and yeah. a frat boys want to see, you know, just fucking. Just sometimes. I mean, even I do. I mean, I don't admit it. I mean, I talk Cat about it. number time. one. I'm, I mean, <laughs> I, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I want to see the characters fuck, but. There should be some type of emotional. There should I'll be emotion you. involved in it to make it interesting. I, you know, I'm sorry, Superman doesn't fuck. Superman makes sweet, sweet super love. You know, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but there are some instances where I get really tired of some superheroines' costumes and how revealing they are because 
I remember collecting a few issues of the 90s Catwoman series, and it was the one where she wore the she wore the big purple outfit. With the hair on? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. with the hair on the back, yeah. and it was so revealing. You could mm-hmm. she was practically nude on it. The only thing that was miss the only thing that was missing were her nipples and the and the camel toe. Mm. That's it. <laughs> that woman number Ridiculous. one. You know, if I if I want to see naked ladies, I can look elsewhere. That's you know, Ian, you like your nudity compart compartmentalized. Like you don't want nudity anywhere Absolutely. else except where nudity is supposed to be. <laughs> Absolutely. You don't want nudity on YouTube. You don't want y- nudity in comic books. You don't want nudity. <laughs> don't get, uh, yeah. It's not the nudity that bothers me. It it's like I I, can, I don't mind nudity if it's actually nudity and not teasing for nudity. <laughs> now that you know, I like, can agree as with. As I keep I can saying, agree with that. Catwoman I number like one. Catwoman yeah. <laughs> like, number one. Oh, I'll get in front of I'll get in front of my computer and I'll have my breasts. Oh, singing Chris out. is laughing because he knows what I'm talking about when I say Catwoman number one. And it's like, don't show your cleavage. Show me the whole thing. Or don't show me it at all. <laughs> exactly. I can agree with that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even going to say it because I know that Chris is going to keep laughing and everybody's going to be like, why do you keep saying Catwoman number one? Because, because if you read Catwoman issue number one, the new oh, 52. Oh, 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 Stephen, why are you showing me your shoulders? You are too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help that, all right? <laughs> My shirt gets uncomfortable every time that I'm like on hand. <laughs> Turn your, your uh, look, showing too much skin. Oh god. Hey, right, we kind of get well, on topic. What, you want me to rip off my shirt and start dancing like Chris Farley in that one SNL skit? <laughs> <laughs> Do I need do I need to do I need to get like a flow chart that also includes somehow just for no random reason the whole like like you know lovey dovey fanficness of of Catwoman issue number one where Catwoman's just sitting there like and she's sitting there straddling Bruce like you know he's one of those little like bucking Bronco dills in like a saloon or a bar. Bruce uh, has a name Batwoman. I think that the main thing is that everybody has their own likenesses of a good love interest and some people have their differences um you know i i will agree with a lot of you about you know the damsel in the stress that does get old um really fast for me i am particularly attracted to more the stronger type women that you know can hold their own with the guys or just be alone you know, uh, at best, you know, it, it, it. I tend to look at it like when it's needed, it's needed to be there. Okay, if, you know, the female's in trouble, if it's the female lover is in trouble, okay. But if it's the male in trouble, the, 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 the female, you know, it's there to help. But when it becomes really cliche to the point it's like, Oh help me! Oh help me! Oh please help me! And not doing a damn thing about it. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, like a for sex, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, oh come on! Like seriously, you know, or or goddamn screaming all the time. I'm like, no, you get your ass down there and help me, dude. Like, <laughs> don't stand there and be like, like, oh god, like dude, like what what movie I can think of right now? I got. Um, I, okay, yeah, Vicky Bell is a, is a good example of one. I love the 89 Batman, okay? I should Actually, totally uh, watch it today. I can think of another example of that, uh, the original 30s King Kong. With okay. Faye Ray, with Faye okay. Ray going, Okay. Ah! Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. My God, was that annoying. If, Every time if, Kong reached for her, she just kept screaming and screaming yeah, and screaming. I, and screaming. I, I, yeah, but the, the point is, is when you look at, like, okay, a prime example of when I first started watching cinema was the first movie I ever watched before was Conan and the Barbarian. And in that movie, Valeria was right on par with Conan, 
and to the point where she didn't need him to back him up all the time and things like that. And that is where kind of I got drawn to why I'm so big on the strong female type characters. And with the more stronger female type characters that came out later on when I was growing up, growing up, the more I realized like, you know, I don't like, I don't like you. So you get out of here and go scream your ass somewhere else. I want this one. Okay. And Kyle, stop laughing. <laughs> okay. But I want this one. Um, when a love interest is forced down our throats, I don't like. When it's done right, I love. And that's why I brought up the, the concept of uh, Peggy Carter and how they did it in the Captain America movie. It wasn't shoved down our throats, and she was right there with Steve when he needed her, things like that. I like that. You know, I, I won't say anything really too bad about the Star Wars and stuff like that. You know, we don't need any Star Wars fanatics going crazy on us. But it, it, the bottom line for me is when you have characters done right, I like it. When you got them done wrong, I don't like it. So you, you get where I'm going at with that? You know? like when, when you have characters done right, their romance will seem true. But when you have characters done wrong, their romance is going to be f fake anyway. Yeah. yeah. I always liked it in fiction where if you, you know, the, character, the female character would start out as a damsel in distress. Like take The Walking Dead, for example. Andrea, she didn't know how to use a gun, but eventually she was taught how to use a gun and she became sort of a badass, you know, be, you know, pre, before what they're doing with her now. Yeah, you I know, mean, you know, I, I, I like when they do that with a character. Like, if you're a superhero, if you have a girlfriend, why not train her and shit? You know, I grew yeah. up, um, I, I, like Chris, I grew up with um, movies that had ex extremely awesome female protagonists like um, the Alien films. I grew up you know, when I, I was real young, I used to watch the Alien movies a lot because, you know, Sigourney Weaver, she was so badass right. in that role. And the thing I liked even more going back and watching those films again is that she's not eye candy at all. I mean, I'm not, trying to say, I'm not trying to say she's ugly. I'm not trying to say that at all. Sigourney Weaver is a very attractive lady, even in her old age, but... The fact is, she didn't... Not didn't helping herself. <laughs> the Go fact on. is, the, what I, the point I'm trying to make is that in the movie, she wasn't adorned with copious amounts of makeup. She wasn't, you know, her hair wasn't all stylized and crap. She didn't wear ex highly revealing clothes. She wasn't objectified in any way whatsoever. I mean, when she was dressing all skimpy-like, it was... Logical. It made sense. I like female characters like that, who are not objects, who appear to be normal and realistic. And I don't like it in a in a movie whenever there's a male character sitting right next to an to a very good looking female character. It is almost instantaneously I can guess that oh she's the love interest. She's the only ridiculously beautiful woman in this entire room, so she's got to be the love interest. That's that's the reason why I'm so much infatuated with uh, Michelle Yeoh so, because the character she play, she doesn't come off as being the oh the beautiful love interest, but she can play the love interest. But we always see her play these very elegant but strong characters in her in their movies, and she's the type of woman that can kick your ass by doing it. And those are the type of characters I like. I mean, Sigourney Weaver, good example. Um, Linda Hamilton as, you know, as Sarah Connor. Connor. Yeah, like, when she, when the first one, I was like, oh, my God, would you? And then that second one hits and just a bam, transformation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Therefore, her bam, transformation. Awesome. Like she just transformed into this. She, You see her doing pull-ups, and then she comes down. It's like, what happened to you? Like, and, and you love that. Arnold scared the shit out of her. Well, yes. one, yeah, and one thing I like to do, I like to see is that just because there's a male and a female character, that that doesn't mean necessarily 90% of the time they don't have to actually become romantically involved. They can just be friends, okay? 
Of course. That's what happens a lot, you know, in real life. Yeah, but it's extremely hard, though. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's hard for filmmakers to resist. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like it's hard. Yeah, like you said, it's hard to kind of. Well, you know, we got a strong male character, so we need unless he's married already, we need somebody that's gonna be by his side. So later on, we we can have that dun, 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 that that kiss scene or something in there. Well, that, that, yeah, that usually never stops. Yeah, stops yeah. The character's <laughs> Hell, even if the character is a little kid. Dating a fully grown woman, I've seen instances where the kid and the woman kiss. What? Yeah. What movies are you watching? Horror. Uh, I, I watched the I watched the nostalgia critic review this one movie. I think it was called Blank Check. Oh my God! With uh, Melanie Griffin. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, that. Uh, I mean, that's that's not really as common though. I've always put it like this. Yeah. Leave I've... the leave the romance and romance novels. Leave the bullshit in the bullshit books. <laughs> leave the rest of us the fuck alone. <laughs> I always say it like this: balance it out. Every action should be balanced. Love should be balanced. Uh, oh my all fucking god! An Just actual genuine thought. It should be fine. <laughs> Can't be that hard. Yeah, balance. Let me, tell, let me tell you what I found interesting out of this whole conversation. So basically, the prevailing opinion is that you want the perfect love interest, now in particular with women, because most of the conversation has been in terms of women and their male's partner, superhero partner, and Superman and Lois Lane and Spider-Man and Mary Jane. Basically, you want, since superheroes are ideals of masculinity, and I think we can agree that that's basically what superheroes are, you want their love interest to be more masculine. You want them to have certain masculine traits, predominantly being able to kick ass. Now, never once did we discuss about the idea of what a woman brings to their relationship or what a love interest brings to their relationships in terms of, I don't know, compassion or caring or tenderness or you know, making making sure your man feels good and all that shit, which are essentially feminine qualities. You got so, me on that one. That's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about how ma they have to be more or less equal in how tough they are and how well, much physical strength that's they not have. Necessary for me. When I but when I uh, brought up the subject of Ripley. Of, of Ripley from the Alien movies. That's one one of the things that attracted me to her is that she had a lot of compassion. I mean, in the second movie, she yeah, you know, Ripley is a good relationship with a little girl of femininity and masculinity, at least in the traditional sense. Because today we have like we have the new ideal of masculinity is one that is slightly more effeminate than like 50 years ago. I mean, it's okay. It's okay for men to be more effeminate these days as opposed to 50 years ago, and it's okay for women to be slightly more androgynous. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I I I don't know what my ideal love interest would be. Like it, it's yeah, I want them to kick ass too, but I also want them to still be women. I don't want them to just be complete total like badasses. It's just, yeah. Too bad. Badasses are bad in relationships. <laughs> Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, well, it depends. There are some women that can kick ass out of Do you think oh, Daryl Lord. from Walking Dead is good in a relationship? Who? Daryl. Daryl from Walking Dead. He's a complete badass. Do you think that he's he'd be good in a relationship? Obviously not. No. <laughs> See? I think Michonne would. I think. No. Uh, Yes, she would me, if she's written correctly. I think to in me, the comics, her in the comics, they even hinted that her and Rick had a, a, a sort of a romantic thing going on. In the comics, I know she hooked up with Tyrese at some point. Yeah, she. I mean, did. you can be a badass woman, Carol, and you can still be compassionate. Hey, Kyle, you've just been sitting there watching. Kyle's quiet all the time. You have nothing else to say. No, he just prefers to, I think, listen because he finds it interesting how we're going back and forth. I think of a character like that. Besides Wonder Woman, I mean, 
mean, yes. I mean. Okay, look at, look at, okay, uh, all right, somebody. Who, a compassionate uh, woman that's, you know, she's womanly. But, <laughs> okay, Lois, Lois, Lois on uh, Smallville, yeah, she was still compassionate, but she can kick ass, too. Like, she was a military brat, basically. Why is kicking ass so important? No, because you were saying I'll give that you a great, you can't, I'll give you a great example you, of it. You were saying that bad, being a badass doesn't mean that you're compassionate. That you can't have a badass that can be compassionate. I'm going to give you a great example. Uh, I think you know one couple that we have never that we haven't touched upon this whole entire conversation, and it fits the perfect example of a woman being a little bit more masculine, but also at the same time still being womanly, still being feminine. And if you look at their relationship, it's perfect symmetry to me. There's a lot of balance of compassion and intimacy, but also. You know, both characters kick ass, but, you know, Remy LeBeau and, of course, Rogue. Yes! <laughs> My yeah. own TP! Mm -hmm. one. Somebody or brought it about, up and me. Or how about, if you want to go with that version, how about Big Barda and... Mr. Miracle. Miracle. Exactly, Scott Free and Barda. Uh, how about yeah. Ollie and Dina? Yeah, Ollie Gary. and Dina. Gene great. and Scott. Mm -hmm. Yes. You got. You know, it, 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 it's, it's basically it's just a balance. If is mainly it's just that you don't you don't want your woman or your male to be just sitting on the sideline most of the time. You don't want you don't want but one to be more, more powerful side. than they the other. Life. They just don't happen to save people and kick ass all the time. That doesn't mean yeah, their life is not valuable. Yeah, see, I like, I like the, I like. Oh, the, okay, the, okay. So would you? Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you can, you can be a woman that doesn't know how, you know, martial arts, and say you can still be useful. I mean, some, you know, some, some of them are just like computer geeks. Like, yeah, you know, I like, like the like Oracle, Oracle. She, I, mean, I like the useful. fighting strong, warlike women every now and then, but I do like me the, you know, the, sh the shy sort of concern, conserved. Uh, regular weak ladies every now and then too. <laughs> weak ladies. Yeah, that, that was wrong. God. Am I, mean, I a weak you know, lady, Ian? Damn it! Uh, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> ah, I didn't say that. Normal. Yeah. Normal. Yeah. Normal. Damn it. No, but no, but you know what? I I think that's always that's, I think been a problem, not just in comic books, but I think in just oh, any yeah. form of literature, even movies. They don't know how to really balance it, like. To me, I've always said, you know, I, I've always said it in the terms of Scott Free and Barda. You know, their relationship at home was just as interesting as their superhero adventures, because you saw their relationship as a as a couple. You know, you you, I mean, I mean, shit. Uh, to to me, it it it's just as fun to see Barda kick ass as it is to kind of see her be the homemaker wife, you know, with the apron and then just like, you know, like she gets mad and she just like, you know, hurls Scott like a fucking javelin because he didn't take out the trash. It's like little things like that I actually laugh at and enjoy because there's a sense of normalcy to the characters. You're seeing them interact the way, the way that we would in real life if we were in a relationship. Yeah, normal was a point. I totally throw point. my men like javelins all the time. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, normal was a point. <laughs> normal was a point. Choice words. I apologize. I meant to say, I mean, not normal, but weak. Weak was a poor choice of words. I apologize. God, I cannot fucking speak. <laughs> That's a weak excuse. <laughs> it's okay, Ian. Uh, what I meant to say, really, is that I like I like the compassionate motherly type characters as well. You know the ladies who uh, who give you know who who give moral support and that kind of thing. I, I like those characters too. And in fact, I'd say that's probably my ideal love interest because God knows I could use a lot. I could use somebody like that. All right, Kyle. You got something to say? Yeah, uh, this is kind of weird. Probably come weird out, but another thing about a love interest in me is with the main character, a hero, is a perfect love interest is someone to be excited to go home and see and actually know about and be think about. And I don't know. I mean, 
to actually want to go see every day. I don't know. That's a perfect love interest to me. I don't know. But those Somebody two, you know, thinking about each other. <laughs> More or less oh, somebody oh. that, that, you know, when it's a long day at home, you know, that was also something I think that was great about, you know, Peter and MJ's relationship was the fact that, you know, it's like, you know, for the whole entire day he'd go, you know, he'd fight crime, he'd do all that, and then when he came home, you know, he was so used to just being by himself, but it's always, I think, you know, great in the little moments, you know, when, you know, MJ's just sitting there, you know, they and they talk about, you know, they have dinner together, they talk about their day. And you know, it's just like you know, the innocence, the the regular stuff that that you that once again that we would talk about if we were in a relationship. And really, that's I think something that I like. I that, that to me is the balance when you can be able to take all the what I call you know the expendable fuck yeah we're blowing shit up we're you know we're beating the shit out of people, but then you balance it with you know. Okay, you know the gone with the wind bullshit, and you know we're we you know what we're gonna have a dramatic moment, you know, and and you know a moment of intimacy, but then you know you go to that place where it's perfectly balanced. You know there is once again, uh, it's the key word that I'm gonna keep saying: symmetry. You have to make it be able to work, and what makes it work is when it is when it is something that feels real it feels like a situation that you would be in you know if you see if you see a couple in a comic book fight it'd be exactly the way that we would fight with each other in real life if we were in a relationship if you see if you see a couple you know exactly. having a you know having a cutesy wootsy artsy fartsy kind of deal like they're at a carnival they're holding hands and all that stuff it's like that's real too you know, the, to me, I to me, I always think that I've always looked at it this way when it comes to relationships and fiction. It should be as real as it should be in the real world. Maybe not completely, but there should be something there that we should look at, leech on to, and be like, you know, hey, I've been in that situation, or hey, you know, I, I remember, you know, being in a situation very similar to that. That that's I think. This, oh, it should never be contrived. Uh, the... Steve, basically, you want Wonder Woman to fart around Superman. <laughs> 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 yeah. Because you know that happens in real life. I think maybe the problem is that some of these writers, some of these writers, have probably never experienced. No, see, I'm a trying to take true... something, Deanna, that was actually pretty beautiful, pretty heartfelt. You know, from an actual nasty ass guy, <laughs> that being myself, and then you. You know, supposed to be, you know, the classy, you know, effeminate female classy. just completely shit all over. <laughs> Why did I ever come up as classy? Yeah, I've, yeah. I, 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 I think there's this, an, is, uh, really, this is really interesting. There's another character I think people. I love oh, Vic. He's just in there drinking, watching, and just going. This is interesting. This is fun. Nah, what I was gonna say was that uh, I think the problem with these uh, the relationships in comics is that some of these writers have not really experienced a real relationship, and when they write these characters, or maybe they, they hate their home to. life. <clears throat> well, it could be that they just don't know how to write it. I mean, some people haven't been in a relationship; they don't know that how to. Unless that is unless they're like couple writers, like Walter and Louise Simonson. I don't know, but I'm just saying, like, like I, I say on a broader sense. They probably haven't experienced a real relationship but and they don't know how to write that. The question is, are they trying to draw inspiration from what they have experienced or are they trying to write a relationship like they would like to have, like they aspire to have? So is it something, you know, ex from experience or is it something aspirational? Because I think the problem when relationships feel fake is that it is something aspirational, it is what they think it would be like instead of something How that they actually, actually went through. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good point. That's really good. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I do that too when I write fan fiction. I kind of like do that. I'm like, How would this relationship? But I haven't actually experienced something like that. So it doesn't come off as natural. So yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. I'm looking at the comments. I'm looking food at the comments. Food for thought. <laughs> Now, Uber Hikari is asking us to talk about Kenshin Himura. I have yeah. no idea who that is. Um, I was oh, just Kenshin Himura? Kenshin Himura, definitely. And, and, and Kaoru? Yeah, that, that's a good relationship. That's, uh, that's from an anime. Yeah, 
for Roni Kenshin. That that I mean, there's a character who she was kind of. I mean, she was womanly, but she was also a badass at the same time. Like her and Kenshin's relationship was really well done. They did a good job with that. Yeah, they did. yeah, they really did. I mean, he you got you got this man who was once an assassin who once was just mostly feared. Who, you know, Malcolm changed, was friend in the background. Changed, yeah, basically changed. You know, he didn't want to kill nobody no more. So what did he do? He he turned his sword backwards. He has a reverse blade, and he lived, tried to live up to that. He lived up to that moniker not to kill anymore. Um, he met this young woman named you know Kaoru, and you know it 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 went from being just a, looked like a almost a, a budding heads relationship, like you know. You jerk! You just gonna leave me here? No, and then it became more of like you saw the relationship grow with them, and I I did thought they really handled that very well. Especially if you know what happened to his first wife. And, and yeah. 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 Very well. so, Especially if you know what happened. With her. Like that's how he got his car shaped scar. Yeah. yeah, that was really well done. Yeah. Like, Thanks for the question, uh, Uber. That was and if if you want my input on the character, he has beautiful hair. Oh, you look. <laughs> <laughs> from, from what I've seen on Google Images, it's just like perfect red hair. Yeah. And, Cross shaped scar, red hair. Mm-hmm. Kenjin, that's Kenjin for you. Himura, yeah, but, don't side. forget that's issues. Side of manslayer. For mm-hmm. Manslayer, he had, yeah, for Manslayer, he sure had good hair. <laughs> Shoot. Looks can be deceiving. Okay, what about, A lot of anime okay. characters have crazy hair like that. Yeah, they, they got the perm it, it's stylized. Hair. Yeah, it's more stylized. What about, what about uh, I was going to say Kikyo and uh, Inuyasha or... I thought Ian, you know... Or or Inuyasha and uh, Kagome, their relationship was re- really interesting as well. Did they? Nah, I, 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 Kagome annoyed me. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's really hard. I, I love is a really hard subject to tackle. Just overall, it really is. That's why they made the song "What Is Love." Never care for Inuyasha. <laughs> Why they made the song. Now see, there he go again. There he go. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, uh, see now, now you got me thinking of other characters that kind of. I always thought, okay, well, all right. Damn it! Now he's got me okay. thinking about that stupid song. As a finale, I think everybody should go around and say their favorite couples. Now, already we heard from Kyle with uh, mm. Mary Jane and uh, Peter Parker. So just like. Three couples tops that you think have a good relationship, whether it's on and off, where they're they're end game, whatever, where they're just one night stand. Hmm. So everybody go go let's go around and think like basically who are you shipping for? Mm, okay, and who wants to start first or should I go? <laughs> you go first, leader. You're the leader. Oh God! Okay, <laughs> um, you're, the, you're the eldest. Uh, oh God, the brother, you're the older brother, so you go first. Yeah, and uh, uh, she, um, she goes next, right? Uh, yeah, she goes yeah. next, right? I, uh, man, this now it's hard. This is hard because, but besides That's smart woman, I, you, I, I'll say besides Spidey and MJ, um. I am really liking the relationship between Hawkeye and Spider Woman. Actually, I actually like that. I actually like that relationship. I'm starting to really like that relationship. Um, Bucky and Black Widow was always they truly in love with each other. Chris, no love, no Luke Cage and Jessica. Love? I was just about to say that. <laughs> Man, you must be a Luke Cage fan. Uh yeah, Luke, Luke and Jessica, they got a kid together and they yeah. they left the superhero game for a while to go raise their daughter together. I always thought that was great. Mm-hmm. Um if anybody else, I thought the Misty Knight and Iron Fist relationship was really good until they broke up. Uh I can keep going on and on. That's why I keep uh I miss the Irish West and Flash relationship, but it's it's still kind of there. 
even though Barry now is with an, another girl, but it's still there. You can see it. You can still see it. Like it's still an awkward moment when they're around each other. It's like awkward. Okay, you know, um, it, it's it's it is what it is. You know, um, you know, it's just there's some good relationships out there. You just you gotta search for them. That's the problem. There you go. This how they do it. For me, wait. This is I I I know this is gonna be funny, but uh, Carol and Hal, even though their relationship is on, Damn, off, I like it. I was it. gonna say that <laughs> Carol and Hal. Um, Kyle and Jay was fun. Um, yeah. although I like him, I prefer him with Nat too, cause she. I think their relationship was better. Um, I really like Dead Man and. The relationship they were going with, with uh, what's her face, but they broke them up with the new Fifty Two. Um, I can't really think of any more right now. I mean, besides the obvious ones, everybody knows about. But yeah, those are some for me. <laughs> I, I mean, Dead Man and um, Dove. Okay, next. Next. Hit it, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I had to like. I'm I'm glad that like I didn't get picked first because I had to actually think about that for a while because I'm I'm always pulling for uh, for the majority of couples in in the comic book universe. But I think the ones I think the three that at least come to my mind that I've always been very supportive of: Dick and Barb, Scott and Barda. And it's a bit of a wild card, but I really liked, you know, and Young Avengers reading their relationship. But Wiccan and Hulkling, I was, I felt that even though, yeah, they were a gay couple, they had a great, sim they had once again going to that word, you know, they had a great symmetry. You know, it seemed like, you know, like they had almost, I guess you could say, like the high, the high school crush relationship that actually flourished into something more. It became deeper, and it's still as strong as it is now. And I like that. I very much like that. Next. Okay, uh, who wants to go next? Ian. Ian. His hand up. Oh, Kyle. 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 Uh, what? Uh, what? I thought he already said his piece. No, he just said Peter Parker and Mary Jane, favorite couples. Go. Uh, my t my last two would probably be Hank Pym and uh Janet. I love those two together. Uh, and probably my last would probably be Scott and Gene. Those two. So those are my three. So those are my favorites. Uh -huh. And I could go on. So I'm done. <laughs> River Malice, let's go. Get it. Um. I kind of had some romances selected, but they weren't really comic book romances, but... Go right oh. ahead. Oh, wait, huh? Go right ahead. I, I have one that is not from a comic book. It's from a TV show based on a comic book, so... I like, uh... I like Luke Skywalker and Mara Jade. Oh! I love yeah, that. I like, I like that relationship a lot. Um... The only big, the only problem with it is that Lucas totally contradicted that whole idea with the prequels that you know Jedi's can't fall in love and all that horseshit. But anyways, next, uh, I believe I said this already, but I really love, I really love Dina Lance and Ollie, Black Canary and Green, Green Arrow. <sighs> who else? Who else? I always liked uh, I liked uh, Bruce Banner and Betty Ross. I always thought that was a really compelling relationship. That's yeah, about that all I can think of. <laughs> yeah, that's the best I got. Aya. <laughs> okay, Aya. Go on, Aya. Go ahead, Aya. Uh, I want. I wanted to say if you would have asked me last week, I would have said I would have definitely mentioned Razor and Naya. But right now, it's like <laughs> I just don't see the positive aspect of that relationship anymore. You should probably say Chris Marsden, Lagoon Boy, Neptune's beard. 
Uh, so Rogue and Gambit are my one true pairing. I like no matter. I know Gambit is with somebody else now. Rogue is with somebody. I, I don't give a fuck, honestly. Like those people. If I have to wait 50 years, those assholes are gonna die together in the old home. Okay. I I don't care what happens. The, Gambit can turn gay. <laughs> Rogue can have a sex change operation. Whatever. <laughs> 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 so weird. Those people belong together and they will wind up together. If they're dumb enough not to see it now, because obviously they're fictional characters, they don't have to exist. But I don't give a fuck. They will end up together eventually. Okay. Um, uh, my second one is. I'm and scared. <laughs> Hey. Because I'm picturing Rogue as a she-male and Gambit as, as a male okay. she. Uh, okay, stop, 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 yeah, stop, my mind is just, stop. Yeah. Stop. Rogue and Gambit for him. Um, my second pairing is that not actually overtly romantic, but I just love them together. Uh, Daryl and Carol. They <laughs> even rhyme. Um, from The Walking Dead, I don't ship them romantically necessarily. I mean, I don't care if they ever wind up having a sexual relationship or not. I just love how completely opposite they are and what they can do for each other. I mean, Daryl can give Carol something to care about and Carol can make him feel good about himself and blah, blah, blah. I just love them together. Uh, whether as friends or mother-daughter or... They, it's just like, it's a perfect couple for me. It's a perfect couple in the true sense of the word that there are two characters that are interacting. And if it turns romantic or not, I really don't care. Okay, uh, and my third one... My third one was supposed to be Razor and Aya, but I don't trust them anymore. So... Beard. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with somebody that hasn't been mentioned, although it's one of the oldest running couples, I guess. Um, what about Reed Richards and Sue Richards? I said that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said. Oh, okay. Um, they had a kid. They're equals, you know, sort of. And honestly, outside of Ult Ultimate Fantastic Four, I actually haven't read that much, but I kind of like them in that book. So, yeah. Yeah, too bad. He's crazy now. <laughs> so we got a couple of comments here that I've been looking at, and Nathan <laughs> <Somebody> Banks. <laughs> Nathan Banks, uh, my friend Nathan, uh, he is always following us. He's he says, "What do you guys think of Storm and Wo and Logan so far? Do they have potential?" To me, it's <laughs> it's. Oh! Their, Kindred spirits and 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 both wild hearts. Uh, well, Nathan, I will Kyle definitely say that um, it's interesting to see them put them uh, the uh, Aaron's put them together. I mean, it was it was Wolverine who gave her back her classic mohawk look. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> she went in the shower and then she made a gust of wind come up and then she said, "Now go on and do it." And you saw Wolverine shink and just cut her hair and she <laughs> had the famous mohawk again. I thought that was really funny. Um, I don't mind it. it they do kind of have a wild side to each other and Storm kind of brings out the best in any guy she's with. That's the pro that's the thing. That's one of the best things about Storm. She brings out the best in anybody. That's the same thing the um, Foo Fighters song was. Yeah. Uh, Get so out of here, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I like Storm and Logan together. I thought it's fine. I liked it when they did it in the 90s cartoon. Um, I, I thought it was fine. You know, they were married in that they cartoon. They should have been together. They really should have. Yeah. So I don't I don't mind it at all. It's, it's fine. Uh, then again, I find interracial relationships interesting. That's right. So. Uh, well, yeah. so we're really surprised. People have said for years that Aurora and Logan should be together. They should. I mean, it, 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 it works out perfectly. You just think about it. I mean, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's, I, mean, that's well, I mean, you got to look at it. Look, look at all the women that Logan has lost over the years. His relationship has never lasted too long. They all die, pretty much. <laughs> Donald Trump and so. You know? And what makes a good love interest? Not dying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dying. Let's see. 
Uh, you have a fan, you have a fan, Deanna. Yeah, I saw. Thank you, over Hikari. Oh, I thought it was Sonic. No, it no no Sonic's not here. I I banded his fans. He's no. You got to call my fan. Yeah. No. That guy's gone because that's that's Steve Stalker right there. <laughs> he is out. <laughs> that's, Steve, that's Steve's love interest right I, there. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, God. We got, we got James said, What's up, guys? Uh, what cut, up, uh, yeah, you don't says, want none of me, Malcolm. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, yeah, well, I. I'm just warning. I'm pretty much it. I'm I'm pretty much done. I didn't say it, Matthew. You poke yeah. the dragon, you're gonna get your ass fucking burned. Uh, he's not here, Steve. <laughs> but I think we we all said our piece. It, this was fun for our first live uh, session. That was fun. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. For all you guys out there that are watching, and we did get a new subscriber. Uh, from Uber, <laughs> Uber <laughs> he actually subscribed to us, guys, um, and that's good. Um, and don't forget, guys, to subscribe to everybody here. Um, you won't be disappointed, I promise you guys. Um, so I, I think we said our piece. Um, that's right. <clears throat> Malcolm, stop drive by, please. <laughs> okay. Um, but other than that, guys. Uh, I want to say uh, thanks to all you guys for watching. And um, ooh, ooh, ooh. oh, okay, go ahead, Kai. You guys want to say? Uh, yeah, I wanted to thank Deanna for coming up with this idea. It was a good topic video, so thank you. It was a good one. I'm oh. glad you enjoyed the talk. And we weren't gonna do it without you, D. See, <laughs> <laughs> they're, char they're charitable friends. No, that's the kind of yeah. That's right. See, you about to the phone. Ah, oh, boy. What you say? Oh, let me see. Steve plus Sonic for life. Oh, come <laughs> on. Come oh. on, Ed. Oh. <laughs> Fire rises. Oh, boy. Where were you, Ed? How do you even get your butt up in this conversation, huh? Ed, don't shoot the messenger. Yeah, anyway, um, other than that, guys, um, thanks for watching, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, bye. and, and redheads for the win. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Peace. Peace, love, chicken grease, and everything in between. I don't know. I'm I'm staring at Deanna, and I'm feeling more and more like uncomfortable <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, yeah, If anybody who knows me, I, I I I have a thing for redheads, and Deanna's killed me this whole entire conversation because I keep trying to avoid staring at her little window. Oh my God! Oh, this is so wrong. Yeah, I was. I, I, that and been, now she's gone. That's an awkward note to end on. Yeah. Love. Well, of course. I'm the master of air awkward or conversation. Or what? Yeah, we're still on air. Oh. <laughs> hey, check it out, man. I saw that. Press the off air. I saw her like pop her head up, and then she's like, "Is <laughs> she here?"